Hello everyone. I welcome you all. Tanmay sir welcomes you all in today's class. So dear students of class 11, I'm sure you all are doing well. And uh, I also believe that you all are ready to learn or to take today's class in a very positive and in a very sportive manner. Well, uh, since this is not a introductory class, this is not an introductory class and we are all set to have our focus on the rest parts of the text which we were doing, The Summer of the Beautiful White Horse by William Saroma. And this text is the chapter one of your snapshot, the supplementary reader book. And there we find this chapter and uh, in this chapter though we have not yet started the textual reading and analysis which we plan to do today let's see what happens what happened in the first class that is the introductory class just a brief introduction in the introductory class we tried to explore about William Saroma and his relation to short stories, the setting which plays a pivotal role, which plays an instrumental role in, in writing a text, in writing any writer for any writer. Setting, that is a place, based on which place you are going to write one particular story or a series of stories. That's very important. That sets the pivot of any literary over. Okay, so... There we discussed about Sarma. There, in due course of our discussion, we talked about Garaglinian family. We talked about Armenian family, Armenian uh, and the name Aram. We spent some time with this word, Aram. And my name is Aram. I told you that my name is not, my name is Khan, then my name is Anthony Gonzalez, that finally my name is Aram, which is a collection of short stories by William Sarma, where, I mean, which got published in the year 1940 for the first time. And there, among all the other stories, The Summer of the Beautiful White Horse is the one of the important stories. And the first story of this series is The Summer of the Beautiful White Horse. And uh, we talked about Aram Sarwa, uh, William Sarwa's son, and how much important is this name Aram, not only for any descendant of the Armenian family, but some other exceptional uh, characteristics feature is also there, associated with this name Aram Garaglinian. So the names, the characters we talked about, Aram Garaglinian, then uh, Morad Garaglinian, then we started talking about a, a, a brief a brief note on Aram, his characteristic features, then Murad, which is a desire or wish. And there I stopped talking because what I am left talking with you, I'm here today to discuss that. So please allow me a space in your acute concentration so that I can penetrate into your concentration and can leave one impact on you. Okay, fine. So now today we will begin from the last day's point. And there I have for you, first, the first slide talks about from Armenia to Garaglinian tribe. Now, the names which I only mentioned last day now I feel to detail the names and the terms associated with it. So from Armenia to Garaglinian tribe. Now we will just try to see. Armenia, as you can see, Armenia is a country in the Middle East next to Iran and Iraq. That is the geographical location of Armenia. Because of the, but why Armenia is important? Actually, Armenia is important in Sarawa's life. So definitely what Sarawa is trying to write about, their Armenia will come or Armenian people will come in any form possible that happens here. Because of continuous social and political disturbance, many people of Armenia leave their country. Remember, here I pause. 
because last day while introducing about the writer William Sarwa, I talked that most of his stories talk about his childhood memories and uh, Fresno, California, the place where he was born is actually the place where most of the stories are set and thereafter I also mentioned that uh, migration, I mean migrating people from here to there and the childhood experiences. These are the two things which we find as common themes in almost all his write-ups, in almost all his short stories. So here, many people of Armenia leave their country and migrate to different parts of the world. Now try to understand why and how. Okay, Many such Armenians go to the United States of America as refugees. I don't find it important to tell you who a refugee is. Now, many such Armenians go to the United States of America as refugees and many such Armenian refugees have settled in San Joaquin Valley. This valley I talked about last day, San Joaquin Valley, an agricultural area in the state of California in the United States of America. So there and how people are moving from Armenia uh, being Garaglanian tribe, how they are moving from Armenia to USA, California. Sarwa is talking about Armenian people, but the setting where he uh, writes the story is in California. How? This is the matching point. Now, in San Joaquin Valley, an agricultural area in the state of California in the USA. Now, some of the, as you can see, some of the Armenian refugees belong to a tribe known as the Garaglanian tribe. It's not that all Armenian people are Garaglanian, but most of the or some of the major Armenian refugees belong to a Garaglanian tribe. Now, this tribe is very poor, but its hallmarks means the defining features are trust and honesty. This, so do you realize how much valuable, how much price worthy is are, are these two features, trust and honesty, that this tribe is across the globe known. There are few tribes only that are known for some specific qualities. So for Garaglanian tribes, trust and honesty, these are the two. Now, if we try to have a look at the Garaglanian family. Now in the Garaglanian family or the Garaglanian, here family doesn't mean that all the 10, 12 or 5, 6 people staying together or having the same ancestry. It's not about ancestry or it's not about having only a small nuclear or joint family. The Garaglinian family is a family tree where all the descendants belonging to this Garaglinian tribe are all mentioned and all are of them are tied up in this single string that ties them all together. So their qualities, their features and their uh, tying up together all actually is a needlework. Okay, this needle work. Now, why are they famous? See here, they are poverty stricken, means they are extremely poor. Poverty, which is amazing and comical. Why amazing and why comical? Because you are poor, you are suffered with poverty, maybe you are famished with your hunger. You don't have any food, any morsel of food you have to eat, to fill in your belly. To fill in your bellies but uh, you don't bend no i will not ask or i will not demand from anybody this is a amazing and comical poverty just enough money to fill in the bellies only they have this much that is sufficient to fill the bellies not more famous for honesty and integrity integrity here sometimes resilience integrity here is sometimes their togetherness Internet, uh, their integrity here sometimes is their brotherhood or their fraternity, the feeling. Now, they are proud first, then honest. So, it's their chest and now they are, we are Garaglanian people. So, now they are uh, puffed up with their honesty. They are puffed up with their pride. I have a pride. I belong to Garaglanian tribe. So, truth and honesty are my two arms. Now, very important to uphold the family name. There's a saying in Hindi, Anjai uh, Shan Majanita. Something of that sort. Correct me if I'm wrong. That kind of feeling. Now, they could never take any advantage of anybody and could never ever steal. 
चोरी करने का तो सवाल पैदा ही नहीं होता दिस वॉज द फीचर नाउ लेट्स अज्यूम दट दे आर द गैरेजेनियन पीपल so the culture of these people known for their honesty is at the heart of the story honesty is in their heart also and this feature of honesty is in the heart of the story set by william sarwa also hmm hospitality hospitality means uh recreating somebody's mood hospitality means uh allowing somebody with care love and attention hosting somebody so hospitality is also an important function in the armenian culture how you hospitable how you become hospitable to people who you welcome by entertaining them hmm? so entertainment recreation these are the features as you can see in the in this photo social gathering revolve around large amounts of food so it's the food the collection of the food distribution of the food sharing with, with the food caring through the food so food is in the center where the social gathering is concerned for this armenian people their religion of most armenian people is christianity which is structured around forgiveness of sins and in this story it focuses on tolerance tolerance is also a kind of forgiveness i'm 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 sweating it's a summer is very is very common that i will sweat because i will feel the i i have to suffer through the scorching heat of summer even now also without any fan i am sweating but i am tolerating for the sake of something for the sake of making this video so i am tolerating means i am forgiving forgiving this sana this surrounding for the sake of creating this video and here in this text you will also find that forgiveness for sins when religious wrongdoings are concerned to be found in this text wait and watch at the end what happens that aram and morod both of them are engaged in a kind of a stealing of the horse and keeping the horse with them and not returning to the owner but at the end they return it to the owner and this so in relation to that here you see that so therefore when that horse is returned the farmer does not tell the garaglinian family that the two boys had the horse all along it's a kind of forget it's a kind of forgiveness hmm it's a kind of forgiveness of the sins that again i am uh, allowed to quote this subha ka bhula agar sham ko laut aaye to use bhula nahi kehte aur khota sikka hamesha wapas aa jata hai that they stole the horse they kept it with them but to satisfy or to gratify their uh, passion to ride on a horse not to do any harm and they returned to finally okay chalo maaf kiya this was the quality that we have to learn from this text this is a take home next after this picture gallery we have again from the last days uh, video uh, uh, i mean uh, is a kind, kind kind of a continuation मुराद सो ये मेरे दिल की मुराद है कि मैं एक बार वहां जाऊं और भगवान के दर्शन करूं दिस इज अ मुराद इन हिंदी सो हियर ऑल्सो यू कैन प्रोनाउंस बोथ एस मुराद और मुराद सो मुराद मीन्स डिजायर सो वॉट एवर आई डिजायर आई डू नो वॉट इज डिजायर इन दिस कॉन्टेक्स्ट आई वुड लाइक टू टेल देर आर टू वर्ड्स विच आर लाइकली इन देयर मीनिंग विच इज सिमिलर इन देयर मीनिंग दैट इज वन डिजायर ऑन द अदर हैंड contentment when i ha i have need i have need means i need clothes to wear i need food to eat i need a roof on my head roti kapda makan these are my needs when this needs get fulfilled i have contentment santosh and when i desire i desire to have a swift desire i desire to have a hyundai i20 i desire to have a pulsar 120 sorry pulsar 220 these are the desires and when desire gets fulfilled it's called satisfaction so murad is all about desire whatever i i wish i desire i get it done that is the strong uh, there's a will power now see murad was considered as a crazy because he did many unusual things ye kya pagal hai kya so whenever you are found to do anything that is off beat than the normal people 
you were saying this is abnormal, this is crazy, is mad, is insane, this. So for doing unusual things. Now Murad was not like his father Zorab. Take a note. Murad's father is Zorab, who was practical and level-headed. मुझे पता है मेरी हैसियत क्या है. So just like Amitabh Bachchan's uh, father, Mr. Haribhan Shrai Bachchan, late Haribhan Shrai Bachchan, the legendary Hindi poet, wrote in one of his groundbreaking poems, "Bait jata hu mitti pe aksar, kyunki mujhe apni aukat achhi lagti hai." Bait jata hu mitti pe aksar, kyunki mujhe apni aukat achhi lagti hai. Maybe this was a saying by Zorab, but Murad is something in. Charvak philosophy in Charvak is a Charvak is a, a branch of the Indian philosophy. There, the Charvak people used to say, "Javat jivat, sukham jivat, rinang kripta, ghritang pivat." Javat jivat, sukham jivat, rinang kripta, ghritang pivat. In Bengali, if I say talk about, "Jato din bajbo, shukhe bajbo, rin kore holo, ghi khabo." maybe that's the desire or that's the importance of the fulfillment of a desire for somebody that's murad so the first example goes for zorab and the second example goes for murad now murad was not like zorab then who murad was like murad was like his crazy uncle khosrav now murad is crazy just like his uncle means a kind of a descendant that is being inherited then who is khosrav now the second point is this shows that parents give birth to children but a child's character is influenced by all the people around that a child a child may be different from his parents and aram understood this by saying this that this is a textual line a man could be the father of his son's flesh but that did not mean he was also the father of his spirit the spirit is when i am born the people i am surrounded with the people i'm walking together the people i'm meeting with it all creates the vibe of personality so after this john byro last year we remember so the aram was there murad was there john byro uncle khosrav a narrator's mother so these are the characters so now in this text what is the role and position of john byro and who the hell is he john byro let's have a look The afternoon when the horse was stolen, a farmer named John Byro visited Aram's house. For what? John Byro was originally from Assyria. Another information for you: Assyria or Assyria, the old name for parts of Iran and Turkey. Hmm? Byro had learned to speak Armenian so that he would not be lonely. Byro said that his white horse had been stolen a month ago. Aram realized that Murad had taken the same horse. So Byro means John Byro happens to be the owner of that horse. Is it so? His white horse. Mm. Now there is a mystery. Now there is a suspense. Let's break the suspense one by one. Pay no attention to it. To whom I will not pay any attention. Uncle Khosravi. Uncle Khosrav was a big man with the largest mustache in the San Jokwan Valley. He was a short-tempered man. He became impatient very easily. Shuts up others by roaring the refrain. It's no harm. Pay no attention to it. This is the peculiarity of his character. This is another part of being crazy, of getting crazy. A big man with large mustache, okay, fine. Short-tempered man, irritable, easily irritable, impatient, and such about this. What happened? It's no harm. Pay no attention to it. Uh, I am reminded of a, a Hindi movie where I found one person who is a very common face in Bollywood, but uh, not his name is not known to me. In one of his movies, he was saying that whatever happens, what is this? If somebody coming late to his party. are mehta saab you came so late what is this so uh, a judge uh, uh, sorry uh, a lawyer is countering him in the in the inside the court and he is irritated what is this 
so the lawyer was also asking this is that and that is true okay so that's like what is this this is a kind of a mudra dosh here it is no harm pay no attention to it i you know your your house is set on fire uh -huh, it's no harm pay no attention to it my house is set on fire and i'm saying it's no harm pay no attention to it really crazy right that's kosro now the horse uh only human beings have rooms in this text no animals are also there though it's not a fable still the horse and the text how much important the horse is the horse is the catalyst that actually mobilizes the text in whichever way it is going to be shaped the name of the horse for the first time you learn please vaziri you can say you can say for the sake of your pronunciation it can be vaziri it can be vazir hmm it can be vaziri or vazir but not vazir because last at the end e is there so it's vaziri or vazir the name of the horse when aram tried to when aram tried to ride the horse alone the horse ran into the vineyard means the garden of grapes of a farmer named dikran halabian again a name please take a note in the copy i'm sure the copy is open before you so dikran halabian is the name of the person who is a farmer by profession and who was there the horse ran into the vineyard in whose vine vineyard dikran halabians now the horse jumped so much that aram fell down and the horse ran away murad caught it back murad hid the horse in the barn now what is a barn do i will share with you the glossary of this text the word meanings still now you learn a barn is a building for storing crops or animals either crops or animals then you can call it barn but if it's only for storing crops it's called granary g r a n a r y now murad caught it back hit the horse in the barn of a deserted means when no one koi aata jata nahi when no one goes and come back of a deserted vineyard of another farmer named fet vazin fet vazian so three names we got in this context vazire dikran halabian is a farmer where the horse was uh, hide, trying to hide and where i mean the farmer who, at whose barn murad got it hidden that is fet vazian please remember these names now here our uh, slides end our slides end because now we will have a look at the main points or the textual flow of this text how this text moves on one by one so that it you can better relate it with your uh, textual reading and analysis which will start soon so the story begins here that this is a story of two tribal armenian boys who belong to the garaglenian tribe you already know their tribe lives in extreme poverty yet nothing could match their honesty that you also know they never did anything wrong and never lied or never or never even stole anything the story talks about an incident that revolves around two cousins aram who is 9 years old and murad who is 13 so you are getting a repetitive uh, uh, revision hmm? last day also the same things today okay murad was considered to be crazy by everybody he knew because for the doing unusual things he was considered the natural descendant of his uncle khosrovi an enormous man with a roaring voice a booming voice rather the story opens with murad coming to aram's house at 4 am in the morning he tapped on the window to aram's room when aram looked out of the window he was taken aback taken aback means surprised astonished he was taken aback and startled to see murad riding a beautiful horse this was too unbelievable because aram knew that they were too poor to be able to afford to buy a horse they were too poor to be able to afford to buy a horse because they belong to garaglenian tribe only this much they have so that they can fill in their bellies i told you na try to relate all the scattered information and put them together 
cut to size okay so as it moves on the only way the only way murad could possess it could be by stealing i want to ride the horse so how can i get it by stealing the they were too honest to lie and yet too crazy to ride a horse this is not craziness actually this is their passion now thus they decided to keep the horse for two weeks to enjoy its ride in cool air they justified their action by saying that stealing a horse for money was not the same as stealing it for riding they hid it from the rest of the world by keeping it in a burn of the deserted vineyard it's all known to you one day while returning from horse riding they came across john byro a farmer who was the owner of that horse so one farmer was uh, dick bellin another farmer was uh, another farmer was when we find at the end fed vazian fed vazian one another so dikran halabian is one farmer fed vazian one was another farmer but we are talking about john byron the third person being a farmer also so who are the three farmers please remember the names one by one now john byro was sure that it was his horse yet he did not suspect the boys okay fine he even counted the horse's teeth and was just amazed at the resemblance and said i would swear it's my horse if i did not know your parents so try to relate the art of forgiveness the quality of forgiveness of anybody's sin why sin sin is a religious wrong doing in dharmic sense if you do anything wrong in any kind of dharmic affair then it is known as sin the similar happens when you have a moral wrong doing just like suicide or anything else it's called vice v i c e and it's a socio political or socio economic wrong doing then it is considered as crime so sin why sin because christianity believes in this concept of sin tumne kya kya paap kiye hai so you have to compensate for all these things god will take god will give you punishment for this okay so now i would swear it is my horse if i did not know your parents so this was the point now this so they are not uh, i mean john byro is not considering them is not forgiving or is not uh, is not forgiving them actually is not pardoning them but considering them by the name of their parents this moving experience led the boys towards john's vineyard the very next morning they left the horse in the barn after patting it affectionately later that day john seemed to be very pleased and shared the news of return of his horse with aram's mother coincidentally the very next day they returned the horse now the story teaches us the importance and necessity of honesty even in the face of greed and passion even in the face of greed and passion the story teaches us the necessity of honesty now at the end murad has been described in the story as a kind hearted animal lover he has a way with animals as he says i have a way with horse textually he loves the horse and shows his affection by whispering to it he is able to tame the horse quite easily and rides it well he is able to tame the horse quite easily and rides it well because he understands animals very well at another point he is shown trying to mend the broken wings of a bird and talking softly to it he is a natural kind hearted animal lover this is the quality now uh, though i was planning to uh, start the text a bit so i will just do it in a very short while and for a short section of the text so this is the first page of the text you all can see and now you see this story is about two poor armenian boys now it's all uh, water for you armenian boys who belong to a tribe whose hallmarks are trust and honesty dear students this is what i wanted actually that be, that by the time you see the text text or by the time you get the text with me most of the things are very much at your 
at, at your tongue's too, at your tongue point. Hmm? That happens. Now, how the text moves on from the very beginning, let's have a quiet look at it. The text begins with here, one day back there in the good old days when I was nine and the world was full of every imaginable kind of magnificence. Wait, when I was nine means Aram, not Murad. Murad is 13. So Aram is actually narrating the text. Aram is the narrator. Please take a note. And life was still a delightful and mysterious dream. My cousin Murad, who was considered crazy by everybody who knew him except me, came to my house at four in the morning and woke me up tapping on the window of my room. Aram, Aram, like this. Aram, he said. I jumped out of bed and looked out of the window. What happened? At this dawn, who has come? I couldn't believe what I saw. It wasn't morning yet. Means there was no daylight. The first streak of daylight is yet to come out. But it was summer and with daybreak, not many minutes around the corner of the world, it was light enough for me to know I wasn't dreaming. My cousin Murad was sitting on a beautiful white horse. I stuck my head out of the window and rubbed my eyes. Yes, he said in Armenian. It's a horse. You are not dreaming. Make it quick if you want to ride. It's a surprise. You long wanted to ride a bike and suddenly I'm, uh, I'm being your friend. Coming and see. Come out. Don't see. It's not a dream. Come out if you want to ride with me. No words. I knew my cousin Murad enjoying enjoyed being alive more than anybody else who had ever fallen into the world by mistake. But this was more than ever I could believe. They are the people actually, Aram and Murad, who live in the present, who live the life to the fullest. Remember last day I, in the slide, I wrote, I will drink life to the least. So if this is a piala, so mujhe akri boon tak pina hai. I will not leave anything. In the first place, my earliest, in the first place, my earliest memories had been memories of horses and my first longings had been longings to ride. This was the wonderful part. In the second place, we were poor. So two things are mentioned in the very beginning. So make it very clear for your uh, textual understanding. Right? This was the part, this was the part that wouldn't, achha, let's do one thing. From this part, that this was the part, it's in page 2. From there till that much possible for us, let's see. In the next video, I will continue from this paragraph. And uh, with this hope that you have understood and you are now taking much interest in knowing the rest of the text, please do read the text once in a very storytelling manner, not as a text. I will help you understand this, uh, understand the sap of the text the rust, the enjoyment of the text with me. So get ready to welcome me in the next video for the rest of the text and its analysis. Thank you everyone for your support, your cooperation, your patience. Hope to see you all. Stay well, stay blessed. Thank you. Bye.